Why hello my students and uh, everybody else out there. Today we're talking about some, uh, some kind of fun problems, some motion, um, something called sinusoidal motion, which just means uh, that when, when things happen, they happen to happen uh, periodically. They make uh, like sign graphs, like this, like waves um, in the sky that, that have certain things that have a period to them you know, the distance between two maximums or two minimums. Ooh, that's awful. <coughs> and they have, uh, you know, midlines. So they have things that are very common to sine and cosine graphs, which is why they're called sinusoids. A cosine is also a sinusoid. <coughs> it's just moved over. So one type of problems that are sinusoidal are Ferris wheel problems. Okay, as we're talking about somebody getting on a Ferris wheel, and with respect to time, they're going to, of course, go up the Ferris wheel and then reach a maximum height and then come back down the Ferris wheel back to their minimum height. So I have a quick, um, a quick sketch for you to watch. <coughs> Here I actually have a Ferris wheel and we're going to say that we're in this yellow, this yellow one right here. Okay, this is, our, this is where we are. <coughs> so what's going to happen is we're going to track how high this is off the ground with respect to time. So time is going to move here along the positive x-axis and the y-axis is going to be height above the ground. So let's see what happens. Follow the little red dot. Here we are going up and up and up, and here's time. So notice time is continuing to move on here. Okay, what we have, of course, as time moves on, is the graph uh, goes higher and higher and higher, and higher and higher until it reaches its maximum point and there it's off the screen. But just believe me that the Ferris wheel is coming back down and coming back down and coming back down. So this is the height now above the ground as the Ferris wheel continues to go um, around in a circle. So remember this is your height above the ground with respect to time. So time is continuing on and this is your height. So the graph looks very, well, sinusoidal or like a sine or a cosine graph. Oh, where'd it go? Well, it's gone. Anyway, that's okay because we don't need it anymore. Anyway, so back to our problem. So that's what happens. We go up like this, and as time passes on, we'll go to a maximum, and then we're going to go all the way down to the minimum again. So some things to know about this. Okay, one period is how long it takes your Ferris wheel to go all the way around. Okay, this is one period or one revolution. Period or revolution. Okay, this will always be in time, like seconds or minutes. Hopefully it doesn't take an hour to go all the way around a Ferris wheel unless that Ferris wheel is huge or something maybe like the one in London, the great eye, that you can take a long time seeing. So your this will always be in time, probably seconds for it to go from its lowest point up to the maximum and then back down to the lowest point. So there's your period. Here's your maximum. And of course, this graph has a midline. Okay, so the middle of this graph is actually the center of your Ferris wheel. And that's going to be important for our vertical shift on our equation. Okay, so there's the basics. Now let's actually get to a problem. So here we can read, a Ferris wheel has a radius of 20 feet and the bottom of the wheel is 5 feet off the ground. So when in motion, it takes 40 seconds to make one complete revolution. Okay, there's all your information. And then the questions, how high is the chair off the ground after 25 seconds and when will it first be 18 feet off the ground? Okay, so in order to answer these two questions, we need to come up with a, an equation, probably a sine or a cosine equation. So let's see, what things do we know? We know that the radius is 20 feet. So let's consider the ground to be this right here. Okay, here's the ground. Okay, so this is our horizontal axis. This is time. Here's your vertical axis or height of the Ferris wheel. Okay, so the first thing we know is that the Ferris wheel is at minimum five feet off the ground. 
okay, which is good because you don't want to be scraping your feet on the ground every time you go around. Okay, and a, it says the radius is 20 feet, so 20 feet to here and 20 feet to here. So let's say that this would be potentially the circle representing our, whoops, missed that point, circle representing our Ferris wheel. So here we are starting at the bottom. Here is your midline. This is the middle of the Ferris wheel. Your vertical transformation of this graph that we're going to get. Okay, so here's your midline. If we do our math, we have a 5 foot height and then a 20 foot height. So our midline is up here at 25 feet. Okay, is the middle of our graph. Let's see, information. We're told that it takes 40 seconds to make one complete revolution. So that means we're going to start off at 5 feet and 20 seconds later we're going to be back at 5 feet above the ground. Now because this is a great sine graph, halfway in between or at 10 seconds, we're going to be at the maximum height. Which in this case is going to be 5 plus 40 or 45 feet. It might be good to know. So as we travel up this Ferris wheel with respect to time, we're going to cross the midline there, and then we're going to hit the top. Then we're going to slowly come back down, crossing the midline again, until we get to the bottom, at which time we'll go back up, we'll hit the midline again, and so on and so forth, until, of course, the ride ends. So some things to know. It crosses the midline, or 25 feet, halfway here, or every 5 seconds. And then it will also cross again at, at uh, 15 seconds. So because this is a sine graph, there's lots of symmetry. So we have 5 seconds from the low to the 0, from the 0 to the max, from the max to the 0, from the 0 to the min. Okay, now I tell my students, since we're going to write an equation, that the best way to write this equation is to use a cosine graph. Okay, we can always use sine if you want to start here. It just has a phase shift. So if we use a cosine graph, okay, in fact, a negative cosine graph, cosine normally starts at the, at the positive, at its maximum point, but this one's starting at the minimum, so that means it's going to be a negative cosine graph. Okay, so here are some things about our graph. There is the amplitude. The amplitude is a distance from your midline to your minimum and from your midline to your maximum. So writing our equation, the negative 20 goes in front of cosine. Okay, so now we need to calculate our period or our B value or omega if this is a physics problem. So B is the 2 pi divided by the period. In this case, the period was 40 seconds. Oh my goodness, let's go back. Okay, 40 seconds. I don't know what I was thinking. I am sorry. <laughs> All of you are probably like, what's going on? Well, this is what's going on. I uh, was thinking of something else completely back when I started this. Rather than erasing, there we go. I made a mistake. I'm going to fix it. 40 seconds. That means halfway is 20 seconds, and another halfway is 10 seconds, and another halfway is 30 seconds. So sorry. I knew something was wrong here. <clears throat> anyway, so we have a B value of pi over 20. So pi over 20 is your B value. Uh, we get the variable T for time. Okay, there's no phase shift, so we don't have to worry about parentheses. And then our last step is our midline. So we have moved this graph up 25 feet from the standard zero position. And that is the equation to calculate the height from your Ferris wheel at any given time t. Negative 20 amplitude, cosine of pi over 20, because it has a 40 second period, plus 25, the midline, tells you the height. Okay, very important. Now that we have the times right, we can get our right midline. So I apologize about that. So now let's go back and answer our questions. How high is the chair off the ground after 25 seconds? So 25 is your T value. So all we're going to do is substitute T 
for 25. Okay, that will give us the height after 25 seconds. And I'll uh, <coughs> bring out my calculator here in a second, but let's figure out everything else. So negative 20 cosine of pi over 20 times 25 plus 25. Okay, 25 seconds. So right here, here's 25 seconds. About how high is this graph at 25 seconds? Okay, so let's get the calculator out. Let me find my calculator so we can do this. Here's my calculator. The handy dandy TI 84. Check the mode, although it doesn't really matter, but my mode is in radians. Quit. So I have negative 20 times the cosine of pi over 20. Here's my pi divided by 20, parentheses. Pi over 20 times 25, 25 seconds, plus 25 feet off the ground. There's your equation. Let's press enter and negative 468, well that clearly means that we're in the wrong mode. We should not be at negative 468. So if that's what you got, make sure you go back. Let's change it to degree mode for that. And let's try again. So we'll go up here, we'll copy, and we'll paste. And that doesn't look right either, does it? Well, sorry about that technical difficulty. Um, let's see, where were we? Um, oh yes, we're trying to figure out what this is. Okay, so negative 20 uh, times the cosine of, let's put it in a fraction, um, pi divided by 20, well, that's silly, pi divided by 20 times 25, and then plus 25. So when we do this, we should get, oh good, 39.1 feet. 39.1 feet off the ground, which is the height after 25 seconds. Okay, so this is going to be the y value of 39.1. Pretty good, okay, right there. That looks about right after 25 seconds. It should be on its way down from its maximum. So I am okay with the reasonableness of that answer right there. So now let's go back and see the other question. When will, the first, when will it first be 18 feet off the ground? So let's try this one. All right, looking at our graph, here we have 25 feet, right, 25 feet at 10 seconds. So it looks like 18, I don't know, maybe in here somewhere, 18 feet. So hopefully when we do this in our calculator, we're going to get something that is less than 10 seconds. So let's go to a new page. I'll rewrite this equation. Negative 20 cosine of pi over 20 times t plus 25 we want to know when that will be 18 feet. So let's do the algebra. Let's solve this thing for t. So we're going to subtract 25 from both sides. So negative 20 cosines of pi over 20t equals negative 7. Divide both sides by negative 20, right, get rid of this coefficient here. Uh, let's bring back the calculator for 7 divided by 20. So 
So cosine of pi over 20t. Let's do this. Let's be consistent. Equals, let's see, 7 divided by 20. Negative 7 divided by negative 20, of course, is the same as this. 0.35. So now we need to figure out a way how to get rid of this cosine. Okay, so the way that we get rid of the cosine is not by dividing, but by taking the inverse cosine or the arc cosine. So we're going to take the inverse cosine on both sides, and it's on the left side, so that the inverse cosine and the cosine cancel each other out, and we're left with pi over 20t. Okay, so whenever we have a trig problem and you want to get rid of the trig thing, you take the inverse. So let's go back to our calculator and see what the inverse cosine function is. That's the second cosine. Inverse cosine of 0.35. That's not 0.35, is it? That's negative. So let's try again. Inverse cosine, 0.35. Let's see what this gives us. 1.213, I don't think that's really correct. But let's see what we get. Let's work through the problem and see how it turns out. And then if it's not right, we'll go back and change it later. 1.35, was it? Nope, 1.21. Man, these numbers in me. I am not doing so hot today. 1.21. So we'll multiply both sides by 20 to solve this continuing for t. So pi times t equals, let's bring back the calculator, put it over here on this side, whatever. Times that by 20. 24.265 and now divide it by pi so it looks like 1.21 was actually good so 24.65 divided by pi is 7.7 .7. meaning 7.7 .7 seconds. So after 7.7 .7 seconds on the ride, you will be about 18 feet off the ground. Let's go back and see from our graph. Yes, 7.7 .7 is definitely less than 10, so that seems like a very reasonable solution to this problem of when we will be 18 feet off the ground. Okay, hopefully you have uh, learned something. If nothing else, then uh, even math teachers make mistakes. But we can figure it out and learn and, uh, and go on from there. So hopefully things are good and you'll have a fantastic day. And good luck with these sign problems.